Do I look like a liar to you? Don't answer that. <laughs> Me, Jim Beckwood, mountain man, Crow Indian chief, explorer, guide. You know, I guess sometimes people had a hard time believing that a black man could actually be all those things. But it's true. Now, um, I wrote my um, autobiography during my lifetime about all of my adventures. It's called The uh, Life and Adventures of James P. Beckworth. <laughs> now, the, um, now, since I've found out that uh, most of what I've written about was true. <laughs> now, they did say that I had an ability to um, exaggerate a little bit. But I tell you something. That to the mountain man, the only sin is the sin of being dull. And that I never was. <laughs> I was born in 1800 to Sir Jennings Beckwith and a slave. My father tried to make sure that I was educated. He also tried to make sure that I was treated as a free man. My father went three times to file for my deed of emancipation. Now, I was an adventurous young man, and I decided that I wanted to explore the Rocky Mountains. I wanted to go out west where everybody was talking about all the things that were going on. Let me just read to you a little bit about some of my experiences. Well, you know, when we first came out, the Indians were really great to us and they showed us some of their choices, um, hunting grounds and things like that and it's very appreciative of that. But we, some of you might have heard stories of pioneers and the rough time that they had, but let me tell you something about that. That was trivial in comparison of what we went through. Most of the men that I was with, we forged the trails. We built the forts that they lived in. Many days we were without our wives, without our children, and many times without food. Once there was a, um, a story that started circulating around. And that story was about me and how I had been captured by the Cheyenne and sold to the whites, and then I was raised there. But, I was supposedly the son of a Crow Indian chief. Let me tell you a little bit about that experience that I wrote about. One day, while setting traps in the fork of a stream with Jim Bridger, I blundered into an uh, Indian horse herd and was immediately captured by their guards. While I was being marched into their village, Bridger, watching from afar, <coughs> saw clearly that he could be of no help to me. So we went back to our encampment and told of the tale of my uncertain death. Well, while um, they were lamenting my untimely fall, I was being hugged and kissed by a whole lodge of crow. <laughs> you know, even if I should deny my crow origin, they wouldn't believe me. And how could I dash their joy? <laughs> I um, got bored eventually and decided that I wanted to stop my fur trading with the American Fur Company. And I decided that I would go down to Florida and start fighting in the Seminole Wars down there. The only problem with that, well, I, I, I became a, a civilian employee for the Army. I was a master teamster. But the only problem down there was uh, the Seminole really didn't have any good horses. And I was really good at stealing horses because the Crow taught me that. <laughs> the Crow also, while I was with them, they, um, I married eight wives. So there was a lot to learn there as well. But most of you are probably wondering, okay, well, what does this fine gentleman have to do with all of us? Well, after traveling the Santa Fe Trail for a while, I ended up in Taos. 
and there I married a woman called Louise Sandoval. I know some of you are counting, that's number nine, right? <laughs> Louise and I made it to the Arkansas in 1842, and that's where I built a little trading post. Soon we were joined by 15 to 20 trappers and their wives and families. And we had this beautiful little settlement right here along the Arkansas. Yes, it was here. And we decided to call that place Pueblo. Yes, my name is Jim Beckworth and I'm the founder of Pueblo. You know, many times I would, I would leave and I would come back sometimes and I guess one time that my wife must have figured that I was gone so long that I must have died. Because when I got back, she had married another man! <laughs> she came back to me and said that she wanted to get back together, and I, I, I want to tell you exactly what I told her. Well, I told her that um, I would have to decline because I was now preferring to enjoy once more the sweets of single blessedness. <laughs> I had many more adventures and I went on out to California and when I was heading out that way I found a pass that would go into California that cut days off of travel. One of the, um, I was a guide many times for some of the first travel that went over that pass that's called Beckworth Pass and when I was there there was a little girl just like you a little girl just like you that was on that trip. And her name was Ina Colbert. Can I read you a little bit of what Ina said about her experience? It was very exciting. She said, ours was the first of the covered wagons to break the trail through Beckwood Pass into California. We were guided by the famous scout, Jim Beckwood, who was a historical figure and to my mind, one of the most beautiful creatures that ever lived. I'm just reading what she said. He was rather dark and wore his hair in long braids. Twisted and colored cord gave him a picturesque appearance. He wore a leather coat and moccasins and rode a horse without a saddle. <laughs> I guess I impressed that little girl, and I hope that I've impressed you with all of my adventures. There's many more adventures that you can read about, and I hope that all of you enjoy your adventure in our wonderful city, Pueblo.